Hello and welcome to the June Outturn podcast. Coming up. It's nice that someone's into the whiskey that actually works in handling and everything yeah. else. I've been to distilleries and you'll say to the stillman, what's your favourite dram? And they're like, I drink vodka. Still number 78.72, Fat Haggis. Yeah, fat Haggis, <laughs> just for you. Here you go, you Fat Haggis. <laughs> Rash Bodegas de Fort William. You do the last bit in it in a Scottish accent. Rash Bodegas de Fort William. So it's June, Callum. The sun might be shining. We're talking June about kind of where does your whiskey take you as a theme? New Yorker. Whiskey, in many ways, can take you somewhere physically, yeah. right? It gives you an excuse to go somewhere, visit a distillery, travel around. Yep take a tour, go to Isla, like we were talking about last month with the mm-hmm. festival, all that kind of stuff. But of course, it can also transport you in can your evoke, mind. Evoke a memory. It can evoke a memory. Think, yeah, definitely with, you know, and other things that can do that are, I find our smells and senses can do that. Um, yeah. You know, like aftershave or perfume or things oh, like yeah. that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to be, t- I had to choose both sides there. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, things like that. Yeah. Definitely. Do you know why that is? Will you, will you tell me? Well, it's because it's, it's, a memory. it's, it's such a powerful uh, sense, mm. the sense of smell. Yeah. And when you nose a whiskey, then it's your ophthalmus, isn't it? Which is connected yes, to the hippocampus in your brain. And that's where your memories are stored. Right. So for good or bad, you know, mostly with a whiskey, you're hoping that it's a good memory yeah. that's triggered, but it's all lodged in there. And just the smell is enough to transport you because that is such a powerful thing that's that's stored in your brain, yeah. in your hippocampus. I remember um, I had an ex-girlfriend who had a brand of perfume and then my nana started wearing it. Your nana? Uh, yeah, my great granny. Okay. My, no, not my great granny, actually. My daughter's great granny. My grandmother okay. was wearing the same perfume <laughs> and I could remember it from years ago. And I was like, this is this is no good. What did you do? <laughs> Why don't you say to her, stop wearing that perfume? Oh, I don't think I said anything to her, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's one way of uh, where does your whiskey take you and uh, specific memories. Well, we picked out this one for the June Outturn. It's called Al Fresco in the Sun. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, the, the tasting panel quite often comes up with bottle names and mm-hmm. tasting notes, which are very transportative, right? Mm-hmm. They'll just like... And, and I think you find that with a whiskey, that even on the nose, suddenly you're like, OK, I absolutely associate this with a specific time, a specific place. Well, especially when you think about all the different components that are in a whiskey and that they come from all over the world, you know, especially with different types of casks. Yeah. You know, come from Europe or further afar. You know, predominantly what we bottle is single cask scotch. So yeah. it reminds you of probably Scotland, but then... Um, there's so many different influences, you know, like there was bourbon as well from America. Yeah. 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 Well, our taste notes also, it's an international tasting panel. Yeah. So quite often you'll get notes from people like no names. We don't really talk about who's on the tasting panel, but you'll get these like German notes, you know, you know where they come from. We know who the German is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, all kinds of notes, which, you know, I don't know what which they is are. Good, they I, I, quite often that, um, there'll be uh, names in a bottle and I, and I won't, you know, you won't know what it is and you have to look it up and it usually is some sort of sort of local deli- delicacy yeah, yeah. or from somewhere far, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so where's that transporting you to? 64.150. Oh, Al fresco in the sun, out, oh. outside in the sun. Yeah, that's what it means. Yeah, I mean, I, I can get it. It's kind of, it's got a kind of um, balsamic-y yeah. kind of spiciness to it. So it, it yeah. does, I mean, obviously like this, you know, so 14 years old, Speyside bourbon, and then an then X PX, yeah. Pedro Jimenez. And yeah, Perique, so. I mean, I'm getting that PX. So it's transporting me to Jerez yeah. immediately. Yeah. And that kind of leathery, you know, hmm. you know, but it's, you know, where it's taken me to. I was younger and even dafter, but I, I went to a bullfight in Pamplona, in uh-huh. the north of Spain. There's a big fiesta, yep, fiesta years. de San Fermin in in Pamplona. They run the bulls through the streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen it. yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Guys run along with the they bulls. They still do it, I think, don't they? Yeah, they still do it. And your only protection against these fighting bulls is a rolled up newspaper. Seriously, it's absolutely insane. Did you do it? I went or did you there, watch it? I've got to be honest, I went there with the intention of doing it. And I got off the bus first thing in the morning and there was a TV shop and they were showing the highlights of all the people getting gored getting and trampled and skewered over the past like 10 years. And I stood and watched it and I was like, I don't think I'm going to do that. 
So I went for the party and I watched the running of the bulls in the morning. But it's at eight o'clock in the morning. So uh -huh. a lot of the people have been out all night drinking. And oh, then God. they try and run in front of six fighting bulls with a rolled up newspaper in their hand. Totally insane, but great fun. Uh, anyway. And went, that's what this whiskey takes you to? Yeah, it does. Uh, because I went to a bull fight and they have these, you know, these leather bags that are filled yeah, yeah, with I, the wine. And they'll pass the leather bags in, 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 and, in the and, stand. And definitely getting the leathery kind of, yeah. yeah. Getting all that. Anyway, that's my wee transportative story. Oh, very good. Callum, Not a bad Hello. One. You just move back just a little bit. Just sit back and you see you're coming into this camera. I didn't even realise it was okay. Great. So, Spain, for sure. But I know what you're saying. There's different influences in whiskey from different places. Yeah, it's, and it's quite a global concept. Yeah. In a way and... But also, where does whiskey take you in terms of the physical location? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you've been fortunate enough to travel for whiskey tourism for whiskey tours yeah, well you know whiskey festivals well also you know i've done a fair bit of traveling around scotland i've always been into my kind of walking and a wee bit of cycling and you know i really wanted to explore the country that i came from and I, I before i started drinking whiskey i think that's what kind of pushed me on to get into whiskey because i was this is not a political statement anyway because i'm not political but you know because i love scotland so much and the highlands and the islands and wanted to explore that i just felt that i really should be drinking whiskey <laughs> Yeah, you know, oh, you should. So, and it's an acquired taste because yep. when I first started drinking it, I remember having a couple of drams in the pub, and like a lot of people, you, the first drams I probably had were peated because you kind of feel like, well, that's you know, that sounds good, that's what I should go for. Yeah, and they're even harder to get into probably at the beginning. And, yeah, and, I, and it was a case of persevering until I really found something that that I I really enjoyed and yep. got into. Um, I, if, I, if only I had discovered the SMWS when I first started drinking whiskey, I think that would have been. Because it's difficult going into a bar and just and yeah. not knowing where to start. Yeah, you yeah. need a bit of guidance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, yeah, no, I think for me it's been one of the best things about getting into whiskey is the journeys that I've taken. Mm. You know, and especially with Unfiltered, we've done a lot of travelling to different distilleries. Yep. We did a series on the islands a, a while back, so you know, went up to Orkney. Went I've been to, to Orkney. Sky. Went to Orkney with my on our honeymoon. Yeah, and obviously I've, I've never been but I heard great things about it and I obviously yeah. knew there was a, two distillers there as well, so yeah. I had to go visit. Yeah, it's, um, but, yeah, tremendous place. You, you drive, when you come back down that road, you drive past quite a lot of distilleries, yeah. you know, on that yeah. east coast. Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't I wasn't allowed to go into any more. Oh, uh, good Callum. Yeah, I've, 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 we've got a limit to how many distillers I can go to with my wife. Yeah, well. She's not actually, has she been to a distillery with me since we've been married? You don't need to take your wife. No, I don't, but I was with her, so I can't just tell her to wait in the car, can I? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> uh, so that's a good one. That's uh, 64.150. We were talking about this earlier on, weren't we? When, uh, as we're not allowed to mention no. the name of the distillery, but this is the one that rhymes. It's it's known, apparently, as the Bingo Collars Dram <laughs> within the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. And do you know why it's called the Bingo Collars Dram? You told me earlier, but please tell me again. Because, like in, in the bingo, you know, you call an, yeah, yeah. a number. Two Fat Ladies, 88. Is, Can you say that anymore? Yeah, I probably don't know. Um, give us another bingo call. We're going to get cancelled a few times in this episode. Anyway, 64, man, I can't say it. Well, right, anyway, it rhymes with 64. And we were trying to look at other ones to see if there was any other one, other distillery codes that rhymed with the actual name of the distillery. Yeah, did not you come really. within? No. Well, we can't say them anyway, so... No, we can't say them anyway. Not, yeah. not Sorry. Really point in that. Sorry for bringing that up, Richard. Anyway, Kraken Distillery, mm. I'd say one of the real classic cases of an unsung distillery. Yeah. Because you hardly ever see a single malt bottling from this distillery, 64. No. You know, basically, you know, as rare as hen's teeth. I'm finding it harder not to say the distillery name now because I've got it in my head because it rhymes. Yeah. Um, and this is the one that's got a sister distillery across the road. It does. The, 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 the... And I think the workforce do a bit of time in both distilleries. Yeah. They kind they're of not, they're not go back run and forth. Some of the lines from, it was one, you know, you hear these stories, they had a... I think you're getting mixed up. Am I? Yeah. Somewhere else. Yeah, you're thinking about uh, Glenn Grant. Oh, not, right, yeah. There but no, apparently they, they kind of share a workforce. Yeah, makes but, sense. Uh, but yeah, a brilliant distillery. And we don't see much of it, yeah. apart from Great Society. Yeah, I think it's bottom. fantastic, yeah. And, uh, and that's a cracker, and it's also... It's also quite a full-bodied kind of type of spirit. Yeah, it? a very reasonable 80 pounds. Is it, is it one of these unconventional space sizes that we like to talk about? Possibly. <laughs> Possibly, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, Callum, we've got a special guest this week. Do we? Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. Still to come, firm and fruity. Mm -hmm. Careful, Callum. <laughs> hobnobs. Yeah. Yep, yep. Chocolate covered hobnobs. My favourite. Delighted to be joined by Craig Scott. Hot off the warehouse floor. Yep. What's the actual Bottling title, line. Scott? Operations team lead. Brilliant. Right. Yep. 
Callum, we well, need to In honour of our, our guests, we feel like yeah, it's only no. appropriate. We'll get into trouble from Scott if we don't. We actually. The hive is on. We are, where we are just now, we're actually on this, the same site as our yep. production facility where Craig works. And I'm based here quite a lot of time, and so is Richard, so we, we know Craig very well. Get this on. <laughs> and we know that uh, Craig's a, a big whiskey fan. Yeah. Right. So we thought it would be great value to get him on just for a wee blether. Long time viewer. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's our biggest fan, I have to add. There was a comment on, you, you put a comment on one of the things or something like that, and someone told me about it. It's one of the first ones that I did, and I was like, oh, that's, that's good. It makes me feel good. <laughs> I was, yeah. <laughs> I was like, he's our only fan. Does it not count then? Oh, it definitely does count, but I just thought it was funny. No, no, definitely. Well, nice of you to join us, Craig. Thank you very much. Is Craig having the same? He's having yep. the same. 64.150. Alfresco in the sun. Whiskey fan. Yep. Uh, any particular styles that you're into, Craig? Anything? Yeah, by everything. So I kind of started off the same as what Cal mentioned before with, uh, like, I like peat. I've, I've worked on whiskey for about 16 years. Okay. I didn't like whiskey until about the last two years. Right. So it was only really since I started joining the SMWS and... Uh, started tasting the good uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like the non-chill filtered stuff. And okay. Definitely pure driven snow. Yeah, pure driven snow, you say. Aye. Uh, so I started off with peat, uh, Ailey. They were my favourites. Recently, I've started changing more to kind of like bourbon barrel. Okay. Um, and trying different cast types. I think that's one of the best things about the society is the the variety of cast types. That you can yeah. Try and... Absolutely. So was it more that when you noticed the difference between the kind of cast strength single cast yeah. bottle ones? Yeah. Easy to distinguish. So started off with one from the society distillery fifty three. Mm-hmm. Um, enjoyed it. It was actually a PX finish cast nice. as well. And then I started trying a few other distilleries but 53 was probably my favourite so I yeah, with that bang and tram and then oh, it's they're always good when uh, you have a bit of sherry there there's like well. a consistency to our bottlings I think from yeah, 53 yeah I think they're great and they're a little bit different from other um, Isla malts because yeah, it's, yeah. it's lighter floral but it's still got a sort of smoky kick as opposed yeah, to yeah. that heavy medicinal yeah thing. yeah so it's a bit easier going in some ways yeah yeah yeah. I like yeah. it too ah oh, nice after trying the uh, peated stuff Spoke to a few people that said try some oil and coastal flavour profiles. So, distillery 93. Yep, another uh, favourite. Yep, I agree. Yeah, so I just trying her. to learn as much as I can. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to learn more about the spirit now rather than this warehousing and yeah, yeah. movements. He likes to send me a photo on a Saturday night of what Drammy's having. Yeah, oh, that's good. <laughs> if you speak to my wife, my conservatory is kind of taken up with. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what happens. All my, all all my since we moved house, all my whiskey has been put into, in boxes in the attic. Yeah. Oh, dear. I keep sneaking bottles onto the shelf a little bit one by one, but I don't yeah, yeah. get very far. Well, it's nice to you know that someone's into the whiskey that actually works in handling it and everything yeah. else. Because I don't know, I've, I've been to distilleries and you'll say to the stillman, oh, well, you know, what's your favourite dram and all that? And they're like, I drink vodka. Yeah, oh, totally. You know? I've, uh, yeah, and I, I did a bit of work experience at the distillery the, the and uh, all lovely people, local people, and it's great that they're all working in the community yeah. um, job. But um, quite a lot of them, yeah. I didn't really have an interest in whiskey and, and, and when people visit that place, it's like, it's so special to them. Yeah. But yeah, mm. there you go. Yeah. So whiskey's taking you on a wee journey as well? Yeah, uh, and, and did So you worked in whiskey before? Yep. And had you decided that you would that, that you did want to stay working in whiskey? I started when I was 20, so I worked for two years after I left the school in different roles and then I got a chance um, to start working in the warehouse with another company. Um, and then I've never really wanted to move away from it, even though I didn't enjoy drinking it. I'd yeah. always enjoyed like the processes and um, how things work. And there is so much to learn, I think. You're constantly learning, even people who have been in the industry 30, 40 years. No, for sure, learning. always, yeah. Um, look, at, look at Callum, you know, he's got so much to learn. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Yeah. At least I'm honest about it. No. Uh, but, um, so no, so when you watch, when you when this comes out and you're sitting on, on a Saturday night watching it at home, yeah. what drama are you going to have? And by the way, you don't, it doesn't have to be one of the society ones. You can you can name another a brand or a distillery that you like, that you, one of your favourites. The blended Scotch whiskey from Thompson Brothers. Oh yeah, one of my favourites. Yeah, we've I've tried some of them. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. They're, they're doing great stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Really, yeah. F- well, I you know, one I tried was quite young, mm-hmm. four or five years old, but yeah. really sweet, yeah. fruity. They're yeah. just doing interesting things. They're yeah. doing a lot of experimentation, yeah, aren't yeah. they? Different yeast types and yeah. you know. I mean, the distillery's a, a, it's probably the, the same size as this room. The other one that I'm kind of nursing, so that I don't run out, is the shimmering silk that we've done. All oh, right, oh, yeah. St. Yeah. Patrick's Day. Yeah, that's yeah, it was amazing. a cracker. Pedro Jimenez, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Fantastic. I tried some of it at Glasgow Whiskey Festival last year. I liked it. Richard put the, on a, the a, a, yeah. a Spanish accent when he said Pedro Jimenez, but he didn't put yeah, an, did an Irish accent when he said Shimmering Silk. <laughs> 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 Shimmering Silk, <laughs> Pedro Jimenez. <laughs> Careful guy. See, I speak uh, I speak Spanish, but I don't speak Irish. Don't speak Irish. Well, uh, good to have you on, Craig. Thank Thanks you very for joining much for us. Me. Always Slang. a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Keep Bye. the whiskey coming. Yeah. I think Keep... this is your hint to go away. Yes, now. I'm going. Don't worry. No, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very right, much. Thanks, Craig. Good Cheers. man. We take the high vis off now. Right, that was great to see Craig up off the shop floor. I was going to keep my high vis on, but uh, well, I, I don't want to be the only one. If so he's, if he's not around, I feel like you know. Okay, fine. We're not going to get into trouble. No, that's true. He's not going to tell us off. Yeah, health and safety and all that. Right, Callum, I think we need to crack on. Take okay, let's do it. I Another important date coming up in June. Do you know what that is? Is it Father's Day? It is Father's Day. Ah. And it just so happens we've got some special bottlings for Father's Day. And this is one of them? That's one of them. I think we've got eight bottles in our Father's Day selection. So there's something for all fathers. All the dads. And from distillery number 7198, which is actually yeah. one that I have um, tried this distillery and also, this is the spicy dry flavor profile. Okay. I've had some fantastic um, bottlings from this distillery in this flavor profile. Okay. Um, in the past, really, really drinkable. Yeah. Sweet, smooth, fantastic. Okay. Easy going. Right. Yeah. I mean, very different from that first dram. Uh, okay. Even just in terms of the color, you can see that. Do you know? It's got a different character. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's I like lovely. that. It's really it's light, isn't it? Yeah, it is light. Very perfumed. Nice mouth feeling that as well. This distillery and, and another two are the single malt components for the number two best-selling blended whiskey in the world. Yeah. Can you name it? Ballantines. Correct. Mm. Yeah. And Ballantines is a good blend, isn't and, it? Uh, yeah. I have to say, all the, 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 the out of those three, all of them, I really, really enjoy. I like them a lot. And yep. you, one, again, ones you wouldn't know in their own right at all. Yeah. Well, it's a cracker. It is £61. <clears throat> so very reasonable. We're not going to go through all of the Father's Day bottlings, but there's some cracking names. I'll pass them over. Yep. Okay. I like, I like so, that one. I would take that one. Right, so what are you? Are we opening any of these or are we no, just going no, through them? No, we're just going to uh, have a look. Right, well, I can start talking about them if you want. Yeah. The still number 78.72, Fat Haggis. As you say, great name. Great name. Uh, <laughs> this is bad. Fat Haggis, <laughs> just for you. Here you go, yeah, Fat Haggis. <laughs> uh, bourbon cask and then... Um, um, the uh, sherry hogshead, mm -hmm. ex sherry hogshead, mm -hmm. um, and this is the deep rich and dried fruits flavor profile. Yeah, and there's, there's another one from '78. Which, is there? Yeah. Oh yeah, both in the same distillery. Yeah. This one is two years older, um, and the second cask is an Oloroso hogshead, so mm -hmm. a bit different there, a little bit older, and it's, that's probably about the length like, of time it's been in the, the Oloroso cask. Two years. We don't yeah. really do any less than that. Yeah. And this is called Las Bodegas de Fort William. You can do that in a Spanish okay. accent. Las Bodegas de Fort William. You can do the last bit in a, in a Scottish accent. Las Bodegas de Fort William. Fort William. Any idea what, what distillery that could come from? I wonder. As a, dis a distillery in Fort William, yeah. Yeah, well, there's only one, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. Aye. I've never been, actually. Um, I've been past it a million times. Never yeah, no, I'd love to go. Their whiskey's fantastic. Yeah, really good. So a couple of crackers there. We've also got... Um, so this is uh, distillery number 80 and it's 0.47, Childhood Baking Memories. So this is, is this a Father's Day one? Yep. I guess that all kind of spills over into the other territory of invoking memories and things it like does. that. It does. 11 years old and this is um, first filled bourbon cast. So I, that would be, um, imagine nice and sweet and yep. smooth. And if it's talking about baking, then you know, you can imagine the kind of flavors you get from that. That, oh, that's a, I like the side of that as well. Yep. And the last one, one. aye. Last one. See that, my Tom Cruise. <laughs> Careful. Uh, Ninety-four point three five waxes and workshops. This one's fourteen years old and is also a first fill at bourbon cask, reminiscent of some Highland makes with its big, juicy, waxy profile. As soon as you mention wax, people get quite excited, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah, o oily or waxy because you know that's going to yep. have a really nice mouth feel to it. Distillery twenty-six. Yeah. Always with the wax, you know yeah. it's ninety-four. Yeah. Not probably known for no, um, but um, but yeah. Wax or oily or anything like that, people love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. A nice selection of Father's Day bottles. You know, speaking of my father, we, we were doing, well, I don't know if you, we were doing a photo shoot in the Bass Street venue and I had to invite some people in to sort of members or people to post. Oh, I remember. For, for, so you got your my, parents in. My, my dad came, mum and dad came in and my dad got right into it. Yeah. He was like giving it all this. 
you know, sitting there with my mum, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Getting, getting right into it. He doesn't, doesn't drink whiskey. Does he not? <laughs> so he's got all these, and, he, and his photo keeps coming up I online. On, in, we in, use his pictures all the time. Yeah, yeah, it comes up all the time, and it's like, he just looks like he's loving it. I mean, he, he, can, he, try, he can appreciate it, but he's not a whiskey drinker. My mum actually likes to travel more than he does. Yeah. You've just shattered that illusion. Oh, well, there you go with them. Kudos to his good acting skills. Yeah. Well, would, do you think you'll be getting a bottle of whiskey for Father's Day, Callum? Well, will I be gifted one? Uh huh. <laughs> Probably, don't know. No. <laughs> Probably not. No. Don't, no. Nah. I mean, I'm going to be all crack one open and, and you're not getting one honour myself dad. and be like, this is hard work. Uh, Having two small children, I deserve a dram. Wow, well, you deserve a dram <laughs> for sure. Don't know if you deserve a whole bottle. No. Right, Callum. 50, 50 pound picks. You know, we like to pick out bottles which we think are very, very reasonably priced. Uh, so we've got a few this month. Uh, 63.50, mm -hmm. which is that one. Which is, 63 is another one of these um, single malt components from Ballantines. Uh-huh. Uh, great distillery. I, had a, I, 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 I was fortunate to visit this distillery because uh, it's not open to the public. And it is used by was it through, the parent work? company. Yeah, it was through work. It's, it's used by the parent company as a kind of training distillery because it's completely manual. It's all hands-on production. Right, okay. So they take all the staff and use that as a, as a place to learn about the whole whiskey making process because there's no automation, there's no computerization. Mm -hmm. It's all hands-on. Uh, so it's, it's a great place to visit and it's a great single malt as well. Yeah. Uh, that is 50 pounds for that bottle. Bargain. 63.50. And this is the sweet and spicy flavor profile. Uh, spicy and sweet. I got it wrong last spicy time. Spicy and dry, spicy and sweet. Spicy and sweet. And what's that one? This one here. You tell me what flavor profile this is. Uh, that is light and delicate. Whew. It's almost, a little bit harder sometimes because it's, there's, well, there's a couple of different blues, but yeah, certainly is. And this one is um, from distillery number 28.103, Limoncello, Lavender and Love Hearts. Yep. Yeah, another, I mean, not only a good price, but you can tell that they're going to be nice, easy yeah, yeah. sipping and just... £57 for that one. You know, single cask, cask oh. strength. Very good. Amazing. Right. Well, we're not going to crack those open. Uh, we thought we'd do a wee piece on uh, a distillery that the society actually has, is it four separate codes for bottlings right. from one distillery? <laughs> what do you think? I no, I thought we were going to talk about something else there. No. <laughs> No, we'll come to that. I after. thought we'd talk a bit whiskey from further afar there. Uh, yeah, so I mean, how many do we have here? We've got two. Two, right, okay. Um, yeah, so it's a distillery that is kind of known as a bit of a Willy Wonka, master of all, um, and it's not too far from uh, Glasgow, um, and they're very well known because they, they produce such a variety of different types of spirits from different stills, which is... yeah. They all, I mean, there's no one else like them. No. No. Um, so they have four different stills in total. Yeah. Two that are producing single malt. Yeah. One that is for grain. Yeah. And then one is for, beef, probably for gin and um, right. anything else. Yeah. And they've got these kind of like hybrid stills, can you call them that? They're kind of part pot still, part column still. Well, they're, they're, I think the trademark is a Loman still. Yeah. Um, and they have sort of condensing plates in them, which they can move, yeah. depending on what kind of spirit they want to create. Yeah. There's, I think there's, there's a few of these stills around in, in Scotland, but I don't think there's many that are actually still working. No. Because um, I've seen, I think Scapa have one as well. Yeah, I, I was, that's then, the one I was thinking about. And then the um, gins produced uh, from uh, Bricladi and one Aye. Ugly Betty, they Ugly call Betty. it. Ugly Betty. And it was from, it, that was from um, oh, St. Barton. Yeah, or, yeah, St. Barton. Um, yeah, green distillery. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're quite interesting. They're, they're, they're a different style of um, still. Yeah. Um, but they also have traditional stills as well. And then for the different um, makes, they, they use different combinations. Yeah. And that's when it gets really complicated. It's very complicated. Because you, someone can explain it to you. <laughs> and that, I feel like the more you get into it, the more uh, confusing it gets. But it's really interesting. Right. Uh, and they're, they're named after the, the local islands. Uh -huh. All the different distil um Makes. Right, we'll crack one open and let's All see right. what we've got. God. Getting thirsty here, Callum. Which one do you want me to open? Just uh, Whichever you want, the 112. Uh, okay, we'll go for that one. 112, and the other one is 122. So yep. that, that's even more confusing. Yep. And the other um, the still numbers that they um, are known for are 135. Yep. And also the grain is, uh, you tell me. 
The grain is uh, G15. <laughs> He's got it written down on his paper. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. It's hard to keep track of. The 135 I remember easily because mm. that's the pot still whiskey that comes from this distillery. I don't think anyone right. could can fault you fault anyone for not yeah. forgetting a distillery number because yeah. there's so many. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard tricky. to keep up with. Uh, and then and then delving into what is the difference between the 112 and the 122. Yeah. That's quite hard to explain as well. Yeah. Well, 122 well, you've, you've, got your, you've got your notes. Uh -huh. Quite often we'll see that peated. Yes. Yeah. But this one's, well, actually, this is not the one I'm opening, but this one is not. No. Um, so the most of the bottlings we have will be from one to two will probably yeah. be peated. So that'd so be interesting to try. These are distilled actually in the same still. Right. But one is without still head cooling. That's the one, two, two. And the one, one, two is distilled with still head cooling. And the difference is that affects the collection strength of okay. the alcohol. There you go. So I'll need to try and remember that myself. Yeah. And that is that from the still that we were talking about before with the condensing plates? Yep. Yeah. Because they have two in the diagram looked at, there was one that yep. didn't have it and one that does. Yeah. So would they have also been through the pot still? No. No. Okay. It's the pot still base in the column. It's the pot still for 135. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yep. I'll remember that for about five minutes and then. Exactly. I'll, this is, yeah, exactly. I'll have to read it yeah, all yeah. over again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with their own bottlings, they actually have, um, on their own branded bottles, they actually have a wee a diagram of all the uh, stills on the side, and well, they just sort of highlight which ones have yeah, been used in that handy. bottling, which makes it a bit easier. Right. So 112.115, firm and fruity. Mm -hmm. Careful, Callum. <laughs> it's very fragrant, isn't it? Yeah. Lots of floral notes on now, now, this distillation... Uh, produces apparently a more malty spirit rather than a fruity spirit but you know I'm getting fruit from that for sure I said floral not fruity okay well I'm getting kind of orchard fruits from that yeah but yeah no, I could definitely get into the orchard fruit as well yeah then like some oat cakes maybe it mm. is a wee bit oaty mm. I mean I get the maltiness as well though that's the kind of sweet biscuity kind of mm. yeah hobnobs yeah 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 chocolate covered hobnobs my favorite I got any? I actually I say this all the time. I love whiskey and chocolate. Yeah, biscuits. yeah. You do say it all the time. <laughs> we should do a whiskey and chocolate tasting. Do we just spend too much time together? Is that what it is? You're getting mm. bored of my chat now. Mm. You need to mix it up, Cal. That's very good. How much do you think that costs? Well, I hate when people ask you that question well, because no matter what I say, I'm, I'm, right, so you're implying that's not that expensive. I think I am, but I'm now worried that I'll say it's lower, <laughs> and then it'll look like it's not actually that good value, and nobody will buy it. Um, so I'm going to go for £65. 57 57 That's not bad at all. Yeah. And, you're, and it's like you said earlier on, single cast whiskey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, really good. Uh, I don't think we'll crack this open, but 122.52 uh, Green-Eyed Beastie. This is also a Father's Day bottle. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, another good choice. Um, that's not light and delicate. That is... That is um, yeah. sweet, fruity and mellow. No, it's not. It's, it is young and sprightly. Young and sprightly. Yeah. It so, looks, looked pinker on the, the sides than it did on the top. Mm. It's these fancy lights we have in here. Yeah. Distorts everything. Uh, another good choice for Father's Day. So, plenty to choose from and an interesting distillery. Um, I, I'm allowed to talk even more than, I, I don't know. Um, so, I mentioned my father doesn't drink whiskey. Yeah. But actually, <clears throat> my grandfather was a whiskey drinker and he, I'd better say he introduced me to whiskey, but that is not true. But he never gave me a whiskey because I was only a little boy. But he um, was quite a sociable guy, quite a character, but he, he um, had a, built a bar, a bit of a man cave. Mm -hmm. It was my first experience with a man cave. The front room was a bar. It had a corner bar with um, a fridge behind it, optics and a dartboard on the wall. Right. It all looked like it was, yeah, it was great. And we used to have... The family would sit in there, and I would always sit behind the bar on the on the high chair or whatever. The, maybe that's the why young I, barman. Yeah, and maybe that's why I end up becoming a yeah. working hospitality for yeah. twenty years or yeah. whatever. But I would always pour the drinks. You know, All right, great fun pouring the drinks. And, and he drank. Uh, he was a whiskey man, but mm. you know, back in the day, at that time, it was blended, and you know, so it was things like Bell's or Johnny Walker, and uh, yeah. you know, he'd he'd have it with ice and a lot of water. But, yeah, you know, that's my first memories of whiskey. Was that, my that's where it all stemmed from. from. Yeah, exactly. He thought, when I grow up, I want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, 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 he passed away quite a while ago, so it'd be quite nice for him to know that um, uh -huh. 
I now work in the whiskey industry. Ah, that's a, that's yeah. quite a sweet wee story, Carl. Yeah. yeah, I do have it in me. It's, it's, it's possible. <laughs> right, uh, we're going to wrap up with something that's coming out, not at the start of the month, uh, as with the other bottlings, but something that's coming out later in June. Uh, something pretty special, I think, because it's a new distillery mm -hmm. for the society. It's a nice round number, 160.1. And that's like the, the, is that the highest number? Or that now is yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that's it. And we're talking again about where does whiskey take you? In this case, the whiskey has taken us to Japan. Japan. It's a new Japanese whiskey to us. Uh, never bottled it before. Very excited to try it. It's very excited to try it. You want to crack that open? I'll get Let's a couple of it. fresh glasses. And uh, yeah, Japanese whiskey, you know, obviously very, very popular. Very much I mean, in demand. I mean, Japanese whiskey is just absolutely fascinating, and it's you know it's been around for quite a long time. If you go, we could go way into the history and talk about yeah. Masataki Takitsuru. See, I got a pronounced Japanese person's that name was, correct. That was pretty good. Um, but basically, they've got the tradition and, yep. they've, and they've got a reputation for some, some a few of their distillers which are which are absolutely fantastic and extremely sought after. Yeah, and they couldn't keep up for with um, demand for a few years, and that and that just made it even more desirable. Yeah. But now um, we're seeing a kind of a new wave of, of Japanese distilleries opening up. There's loads of new distilleries opening in Japan. Yep. This one's actually a, a bit older. It's not one of the new ones. But yep. it's, it was an older distillery. Well, I'm not sure exactly what age, but it closed and then reopened or something. Well, Richard, would you like to tell us about everything you know about this distillery, please? I'll tell you what I do know. It's, it's actually an old company, uh, which, is, which comes from a sake background. So well known as a sake producer, and like many other sake producers, yeah. moved into whiskey. Yeah. And it moved into whiskey, uh, and they employed a guy who worked with Masataka Taketsuru. Okay. And apparently, this guy uh, was uh, Keiichiro Iwai, and he was instrumental in getting the company, uh, which was called Setsu Shuzo to send Masataka Taketsuru to Scotland to oh, learn right. how to make whiskey. Okay. Uh, so he was a kind of mentor oh. for Taketsuru. Taketsuru went off to Scotland, studied at Glasgow University, uh, then went and kind of like got all the secrets about Scottish distillation in his notebooks. And a Scottish wife. And a Scottish wife uh, from Kirkintilloch, uh, went back to Japan and the company that sent him, Setsu Shuzo, they were like in bad financial straits at that point. So they were like, you know what? We're not going to go into whiskey making. Really? Uh, we, we, we don't have the money for it. <clears throat> so Takitsuru went off and did his own thing eventually with, uh, with Yoichi and Nika. Uh, and this other guy, EY, he was subsequently employed by this company the sake company, because they wanted to get into whiskey. So he actually was able to use a lot of Takitsuru's learnings to set up their first whiskey distillery. Wow. And that's the one that you think you're thinking about that opened up and then closed, closed down again. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's been on and off, mm. but uh, at the moment is very much on. But it's, uh, it's a distillery, I think it's like one of the highest uh, altitude distilleries in Japan, at, in Nagano. Remember they had the Winter Olympics in Nagano? Oh yeah. So it's up in the Japanese Alps, cool. so very, very high. And then they built a second distillery, but that one is at their HQ in Kyushu Island. You've which, done your homework, Richard. Which is in the bottom of Japan, and it's like, it's, it's well, like it's quite far apart, subtropical. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Right, okay. So one distillery that's one of the highest points in the Japanese Alps, and the other distillery, which this one comes from, is a, a more kind of tropical climate. Oh, so this one we're drinking is from a tro yeah. more tropical climate. Yeah, yeah. So 159 up in the Japanese Alps, Yeah. 160 down in Kyushu Island. And uh, it's an interesting place because of the tropical maturation. Mm. And you can kind of get that sense, can't you? It's Maybe a reminiscent a little bit of some of the Taiwan whiskey that we've had. <clears throat> so this one is called Mango in the Dojo. Mm. Deep rich and dried fruits. Mm. First fell sherried hogshead, and it's, it's five years old actually. Whoa! And, and only the last thing I saw there was the age of it, and uh, having nosed it, I'm, I'm yeah. surprised that it's so young. But that comes down to the that's incredible the maturation process that you're talking about. Mm. But it smells. It's got a lovely kind of gummy sweetness to it. On yeah. Nose. Well, it's a PX cask, isn't it? No, it just it just says sherry. Oh right, sherry. We don't know what it is. You'd think that probably is PX. Well, it definitely you? has a sweetness to it. Yeah. 
uh, but they do maturation as well in different parts of the island and they even use uh, an island off the island uh, which has got a unique kind of ecosystem and they mature some of their whiskies on this island. That's it's cool. a UNESCO World Heritage kind of right. site, you know, so it, because it's actually got a unique ecosystem and they, they mature some of their whiskey there. This is fabulous. So stuff. it's good stuff. And it's, it's, it's interesting because not only because of the story behind it, but like <clears throat> just the flavours and the taste of it is, mm. is quite different, very unique from you know, anything we've had before. It's really rich, isn't it? Smooth to start with, and then it's got the spiciness kind of kicks in, and it, and it kind of lingers. Yeah. Um, the mango in the dojo, you know what the dojo is? I know what do dojo is, yeah. It's kind of conjuring up that yeah. uh, Japanese Two mangoes art. fighting in the dojo. Mangoes fighting in the dojo. Yeah, it is, it is lovely, fruity, spicy. It's a, like a really ripe mango, mm. isn't it? Mm. Like it's it, almost... It lingers for ages, the flavours just keep on going. Mm. Delightful. Mm. Mm. Really spectacular. So that's coming out uh, in June. That's a later release though. Later release, one to look out for. Uh, £115 for that from this uh, new distillery number. Yeah. 160.1, Mango in the Dojo, but uh, definitely one to look out for. There's always a lot of excitement when a, a point one comes out, everyone's time to try the new yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Look at the legs in that as well. Yeah, Tremendous. Great. All right, let's not forget the footy. The, the big event. <laughs> oh, you want me to do it? Yeah. Um, okay, so this is um, from distillery number 42.84, which is. Uh, an island distillery, mm -hmm. um, so technically a highland region, mm -hmm. 15 years old, mm -hmm. oily and coastal. Mm -hmm. We quite often see these peated or non-peated, but um, it's been fantastic. Yeah. And this is a special release to celebrate um, Germany 2024. Celebrate yeah. Scotland qualifying for Germany Scot Scotland 2024. Scotland actually qualified. Yeah. Let's have a drink to that. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you put your name down for the sweepstake? Yeah, I did. Well, who did you get? I got Switzerland, which is terrible. <laughs> it's doubly terrible because Scotland are playing Switzerland. All oh, right, okay. So, you know, that's money down the drain. I got Poland. Well, that's probably money down the drain as well. Yeah, yeah. That's all just for fun, Richard. Are we, are we cracking this one or are we just... No, I think we'll just save that one. But uh, let people know, special bottling coming out for Euro 2024. Me Melifluous Menthol. Is that how I pronounced that correctly? Melifluous. Melifluous. Yes. Melifluous menthol. <laughs> I don't think I said it quite like that. Uh, they don't but make yeah. it easy for you, do they? No. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, lots to celebrate this summer. June's going to be a busy month. It's Father's Day, the football. Sunny, sunny weather, everything. Holidays day. in Mallorca. Holidays. Yeah, it's all good. No, it's Japanese time. whiskey. Lots to yeah. be excited about. Lots to be excited about. So Let's have a toast to that. Yeah. Come on, Scotland. Come on, Scotland. Cheers. Get into them. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>